And basically, your demographics is the... Oh, sorry, let me do something. Oh my God, what did I do? So you have your psychographics and you have your, I just want to speak to this. Okay. So you have your psychographics and you have your, um, okay, I'll just start again. All right, so let's talk about how to carry out customer research. Now, in customer research, there are two things you need to be researching for. You need to research the psychographics, which has to do, do with the mental part of your customer, and you need to research the demographics. This has to do with your physical, um, the physical parts of your customer or anything physical about them. All right, so um, first and foremost, let's talk about the psychographics. But well, before I do that, I want to even talk about why you need to research your customer. Now, the reason why you need to research your customer is because you need to know your message, what you're going to tell them that will attract them to you. Remember, you're spending money. Your ad is going to reach them, no doubt. That's one big difference between um between organic um, organic ads and you know paid ads. With organic ads, your reach is not guaranteed. With paid ads, your reach is guaranteed. But whether they take action or not is now dependent on um on what you what you write, what you tell them, how good your offer is, how captivating um, your offer is in the first place. So this is why you need to carry out amazing customer research, right? So some of the things we need to research includes their pain, like under psychographics, right? The pain, what pain are these people going through? Now, our, mind you, our example product here is affiliate marketing, right? So what pain do people go through? What pain are they going through? Why? What the hell do they even want to solve? What is the main thing keeping them um um pain at keeping them pain? Right? What's the main thing keeping them sad? What's the main thing keeping them awake? Right? You want to know what these stuff are. Right? Then um you want to also know what is their. So I just want to be sure no messages. Okay. You want to also know. Okay, so you want to also know what are their, what's the pleasure? What pleasure do they want? It's very important to understand that human beings run away from pain towards pleasure. Now, I want to say some other stuff. We always run, apart from the fact that we run away from pain to pleasure, we will spend more to um, solve pain than to attain pleasure. So, which means basically, one of the things you could make a lot of money on is pain you could make a lot of money solving pain than you could um, with pleasure. Now, it's not like you cannot make a lot of money with pleasure, but more people have pain than people who are chasing pleasure. And so if you're doing something that has to do with pleasure, and my advice to you would be target your rich. Don't ever target broke people with pleasure. They don't have the money for that. But at this moment, most of them are trying to, you know, um, avoid pain. So you don't want to target them with pleasure type of whatever thing you're selling should not be pleasure. It should be more of towards solving pain. All right, so... You want to check out, you want to um, do research on what pleasure do they want. You want to do research on their desires. What are they after, right? What are they after? What do they um, What do they want? What are their dreams? You want to check out their dreams. You want to check out their fears. What are they afraid of? If they don't solve that problem they have, what happens? You need to know that. Because you are going to use it in your message. For example, if as an affiliate marketer, um, if I'm going to sell an affiliate marketing product, right, I will tell them that, um, okay, an example of a pain now will be that they wake up early in the morning around six, maybe if you're in Lagos, you wake up around five, three o'clock, you know, to go to work, three o'clock, imagine the pain of waking up by three o'clock every day to go to work and going to a boss that doesn't like you, right, going to an office you don't even enjoy, I'll now tell them, I can tell them, okay, a, an example of pleasure, Imagine being able to sit down in your house and make all the money you want and order food and food gets delivered to you and you never have to step out of your house except if you're going to a party. Pleasure, right? I can talk about desire. I can say, imagine being able to travel the world and see places that you only get to see on TikTok. 
pleasure. I'm sorry, desire. I'm giving. I'm. I'm. I'm feeding into their desire, right? I can look at their fears. Um, a fear, a major fear, could be that okay, oh, you um, imagine being replaced by a robot, or imagine being replaced by AI in a few months, and you have no skills, and you now go broke, and you're chased out of your house by your landlord. That's a fear. All right, so you're going to see how to use all these later. Then um, there are thought patterns, very, very important as well. You need to understand their thought. How do these people think? Are these people thinking in terms of um, wanting to look for solutions? Are they thinking of, in terms of looking for, for example, let's look at uh, people, let's look at people who want to get rich, who want to make money, like in this affiliate marketing, right? There are two sets of people here. There are people who are looking for the legal way to make money. And there's some people who will go and do Yahoo. You know, they're going to do Yahoo, they're going to do fraud, do whatever. They are all looking for, they are all looking to solve the same problem, but their thought pattern is very different. So you need to know what is your customer thought pattern. Because if you're not looking at, if you don't look at, for example, uh, let me let me give you an example here. I, I run ads all the time. So um, I was sometimes on my ads, especially those for my client, you'll see people coming to comment on their ads, scam, they play, you know, all those, <laughs> all those things we usually, you know, all those things we usually see. Now the thing is, those are their thoughts, but at that moment, you cannot sell anything to those people. So you need to know that those are not your customers. You need to understand your thought pattern. You need to also understand their failures and frustrations. What have they done? Right? What have they done before? Right? What have they tried before that is um that did not work? You need to understand that. Well, what are they frustrated about? So, okay, some of them have bought different courses before. It did not work. So if you understand that level of frustration, um, then you are able to, you know, market more to them. Your message becomes stronger. The next thing you need to understand, and this is one of the most important, is their level of awareness. They have a problem which you want to solve. What level of awareness are they? Some people are completely unaware that they have to make money online or they can make money online. Some people are aware that they can make money online, they just don't know how. Some people know that affiliate marketing can make their money online. Some people have bought affiliate marketing courses. Those, all those four people I've mentioned are on different levels of awareness. So your level of awareness will be very, very important to who clicks on your ad. For example, if you if you make an ad that says um, how to make money with affiliate marketing or make 750k more things affiliate marketing, somebody who does not know what affiliate marketing is will see that ad but what will interest them is they make 750K. They were not interested in their affiliate marketing because they don't even know it. So if you now carry them to somewhere and instead of you breaking the affiliate marketing to its dumbest parts so that those people can understand the process, you do not do that. You just maybe did it like for somebody who is already advanced. What's going to happen is there's a disconnect between this person has, he doesn't know anything about affiliate marketing to a point where he's being told that he should pay money. And so he will not pay any money. But if you were to take them on a journey, maybe in your ad, you told them how to make money by um, selling other people's products. And then that's basically what affiliate marketing is, right? And then you now took them on a stepwise journey, what affiliate marketing is, how it works and all that. And you ask them to pay you. They relate more. They will be more willing to pay you because you've met them at their level of awareness. So this is very, very important. You need to be able to understand your customer's level of awareness. And that will come from the offer you're giving out. For example, if I am doing a 30 minutes class on affiliate marketing, I don't have time to go through all the, sorry, let me meet this. Can I meet this here? Yeah, meet for one. All right, so I don't have time to go through all the, um, you know, level of awareness, and um, sorry, I don't have time. To, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm at the 30 minutes class, right? I don't have time to teach everything on affiliate marketing and carry the people who don't know anything about it. So my message to attract people will have to talk to people who know a little bit about affiliate marketing already. So that is that about level of awareness, and we talked about psychographics. I believe um, we all understand. And we all understand this so far. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is the demographics. This is very, very important. You want to know their age. Why? Why do you want to know their age? Let's say you're selling a 5K product. Well, almost everybody can get it, right? Except maybe people under 18 years old, 20 years old, they may not be able to buy your 5K product. But if you're selling a 100K product, realistically, how many people under the age of 30 can buy a 100K product? Especially if you're even selling a digital product. 
you're automatically not talking to those people. So this is why you know, need to know their age because anybody under 20, they generally, most of them are not having any money, any money. So your age is very, very important. For example, when I was running this ad, which brought you to my group, I didn't target anybody less than 27 years old. The, and I did that very specifically because I didn't want to have young people of 18, 19, 20 joining my groups, 22. Uh, those people, uh, they don't have a, most of them don't have a product to sell. All of you here are business people and that's why I allowed you here, right? right? That's why I targeted you. And so most of those people don't have anything to sell. So they cannot be on my group, right? They cannot be on my group. So I didn't want them there, right? So, um, you need to go understand their age. You need to know the gender. Your well, gender is very important. You're selling a female product. For example, I sold a cream. Uh, let me see if I can find that cream. Let me see if I can find that cream. Um, that's just a that's just by the way. Anyway, I sold a cream and um. Okay, no, I don't have it here. I sold a cream and oh my, sorry about that. Never are doing that. Thing. So I have, I will back up for this. Let's see if that works. Yeah. Okay. So. It's good to be prepared. Okay, so I sold the cream and while selling that cream, oh my God, we are still on the first topic. Whoa. Okay, so I sold the cream and we basically targeted women, right? I sold it for a client before and we basically targeted women. So what I'm trying to say here is you need to know their gender. You need to know whether your product is for men or women, right? So the second thing um you want to, sorry, the second thing you want to do is, um. Okay, the next one is that you want to know their location. Who are you selling to? Do you deliver all, all over Nigeria or do you deliver locally? You need to understand where they are. You need to know their location. Not just location in terms of physical location, but also in terms of um, um, reach. For example, if you are targeting, let's say, people above, if your product is for people above, 50, 60. Most of those people are not on Facebook ads. So basically, I don't see why you, you'll be doing anything on Facebook. Right? You need to go to the newspapers, right? You need to go on signboards. They're not on Facebook ads. If you're targeting people under uh, 19, 18, under 20, I will generally tell you, look for TikTok because most of your market are there, right? So you need to also understand where do they convert. That's another part of location. So mind you, location has two parts, their physical location and then where they convert, because you need to know where to reach them. If you're targeting 18 and they are not, they are not on Facebook, they, they real, they, most of them are on TikTok, right? So that's where you reach them, all right? Then the next thing is who do they listen to? It's very, very important. Do they listen, again, it goes back to that, their you know, uh, thought patterns. Who do they listen to? If they're already listening to people like you, well, good for you. If they are not listening to people like you, then your message is not gonna work for them. So you need to know who they're listening to. You need to look at what they've tried before. What have these people done? What have your competitors told them before that did not work, right? Or worked partially. You need to know that because you integrate that in differentiating your product from um from theirs, right? You need to differentiate your product from that of your competitors. Then you also want to look at what results have they gotten before. Okay, they've tried ABC product. It worked partially, but it didn't work completely. You need to know that as well. Okay, so let me use an, uh, so in real estate, in real estate, again, you need to, again, we are talking about age, age still plays in, gender still plays in, but you don't, I think most people don't really bother, gender part doesn't really play too much part, but the, the age does play a very important part. Location comes in as well, because you're selling a land in, um, you're selling land in um, Abuja, and somebody in, uh, in Zamfara is seeing your ad, somebody in Zara is seeing your ad, doesn't make sense. Yes, you can target the whole country, but your message is going to help in determining who sees it. And I'm going to explain that to you as we get into the um, ad parts very, very well. Then um, what have they tried before? Remember, these people have tried to buy land before, but they were not convinced um, for one reason or the other. They were not convinced. And then um, the results they've gotten before, you need to, you know, you need to know all this. It doesn't matter what you're selling. It all works the same way. Yeah, that's true. It all depends on the kind of real estate product you're selling. So it really, it really depends. But the idea is you need to carry out in-depth research on who your customer is. For example, one thing I've seen about real estate, um, real estate specifically is that most people, when they're doing targeting with real estate, um, they they do not understand what they are selling, right? You, you're trying to sell a real estate business and you know you're targeting everybody and your message is not clear, 
that especially all the video, the videos, the creative to use are not clear. They are not showing that thing. And maybe you just got snap land. It doesn't work. Most people do not have any land does not really um uh, they don't really if you see I don't know how to put it now. When they see dry empty land, it does not make sense to most people, right? You need to be able to project. What are these people buying this land? Are they buying the land to just keep it? Most of them want to build, right? Most of them want to do something. You need to be able to project. So sometimes showing the, um, the what I call it now, the attractions on that land is going to do more work than just showing dry land. I've seen cases where people just come and show dry land. And this is 300 square meters. I don't know what a square meter is, but if you showed me that this is very close to maybe Dangote Refinery, this is close to this place, oh, I now think about it. Wow, I'm going to be building a house in the next two, three years. This land is going to appreciate because it's close to this, it's close to that, it's close to this, close to that. And that makes sense to me, right? So that's very, very important. Now, back to what I was using. Um, so the, th the third thing you want to do is to write out as many of these things as possible. You want to write out all these things you find out, write them down, because they will determine the message you put out there. Now, um, then the last thing you want to do is that you've now found out some of the problems they have, the pain. You want to touch as many of them as possible. So you want to create bonuses. Right, apart from the main thing you're selling, you want to create bonuses that touch on these different areas, right? So, for example, if you're in affiliate marketing now, a, 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 a bonus you could create is, you know, on how to make more sales. You could create a mini course on how to make more sales or an ebook on how to make more sales. You can create an ebook on how to save money because I know a lot of affiliates that made a lot of money in 2021. Today, nobody hears anything about them because fast money came, fast money went, and, and you know, everything has. We have people that cannot join and serious. Okay, so they've made money and then everything has gone. So that could be an a bonus, and right? And some people will need it. Okay, you can make you can also maybe create an a mini course or an ebook on how to you know create their own course and stuff like that. Let's say um if I was into real estate, one of the bonuses I'll create, I can give you a, a an ebook on on how to improve the worth of your land. Right. Uh, why I know that because I had a friend who was so good here at landscaping, right? He knows how to do landscaping, get the land, start putting one or two things on it and makes the land so awesome. Right. And so it improves. Mm, so the thing is, if you're selling real estate, uh, sorry, I don't know if this is showing on screen. You don't have to be showing stream black. Right, stream black. Yeah. So if you're selling real estate and um, you want people to, how do you put it now? You want people to invest, right? And you want investors to put their capital for return on investment, right? It depends on, on your ability to convince them. In this kind of thing, I would usually not tell you to, to run ads for this because um, if you, you first want to mix these people. So what you're going to do here is run lead generation ads where you can put an offer together and explain to them how this works, get them to call you, have a Zoom call, that's what I would do, have a Zoom call like this where they can see you, then schedule an in-person meeting, very, very important. Especially when you are looking for investment, people want to see you. Most people judge you based on how they see you. The moment they see you, they hear your voice, the feel your presence. I think that's what you should do. So in terms of targeting, your normal targeting will work, but, um, yeah, it can be a webinar, it can be a webinar, it can be a webinar. It could be a webinar, but you still need to schedule a call. You still need to get them after the webinar. Don't sell to them on the webinar. Just tell them, schedule a call if you're interested in this. And they'll do that. I did that for when I was promoting this, uh, my promotion. When I was having people who wanted to, uh, for me to run ads, I did a webinar. If you're interested, book a call and call me. And then we spoke on Zoom, we spoke on WhatsApp, different ways. Okay, so this is basically how to carry out customer research. Um, in the next video, we are going to talk about... Um, okay, so we're supposed to have Q&A, but I think we'll just do that at the end. So this is the second thing, this is the second day, and we're going to talk about how to write captivating ad copies. We're going to talk about how to write advertising copies using AI. You already have a little bit of that for those of you who got the bonuses.